Steve, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Steve, let's start with an overview. What is Pond Technologies and what does it do? Pond Technologies is an algae company. We grow algae off untreated stack gas emissions from any of the large final emitters you can imagine. We can grow algae off of the gases that come out of a cement plant, a steel plant, and in fact, uh, even small combined heat and power plants. Hmm. And how do you do that? We essentially pipe the emissions into large bioreactors that are proprietary or they're our design and covered by our patents. We deliver the appropriate growing conditions, which includes light, uh, carbon dioxide, obviously that comes from the stack gas mm -hmm. emissions, micronutrients, and also include harvest. And uh, basically the upshot is it's a turnkey system that turns the nasty, noxious emissions into something that's literally green and edible. Hmm, and edible. So. Is this a carbon sequestration play, or is this a biofuel play, or is it both? It's that and others. Hmm. Uh, it's not sequestration per se, it's hmm. carbon utilization. Okay. Sequestration is more of a let's kind of hide it and hope it doesn't come back to bite you. In the case of what we do, the algae actually need carbon dioxide as its food. They eat it. Mm -hmm. And it's not just biofuels, but there are other products that come out of the other end of it that are far more valuable even than the biofuels. We can do soil amendment. Mm -hmm. So if you're working on the oil sands and you have to put the site back to the way it was before, you need an organic phase to add to the soil. Mm -hmm. The algae is perfect uh, for that. Uh, biofoams, uh, folks are interested in adding algae to polymers to make sneakers, if you can believe such a thing. It's also extraordinarily edible by us, by fish, and by animals. And there's a huge dearth of animal and aquaculture feeds, and algae plays right into that. So mm. you can turn the emissions from a smokestack into something that can uh, help feed people. Okay, so how do you mitigate toxins like sulfur and the nitrogen that would be present, or nitrous oxide, or NOx particles in the algae, or is that what they do is convert that into yeah, proteins? You've and gotten right to it. That's exactly what they do. They okay. need a certain amount of sulfur, and hmm. the oxides of nitrogen are not a contaminant to them. It's their food. Um, you and I would not be able to survive on the emissions from a smokestack if we were to breathe that for an, some protracted period of well, time. I could, but it wouldn't be good. Well, you know, it depends, <laughs> oh, depends on what your history is. Right. Uh, I, my body is my temple, so right. it would be harder for on me, but the uh, the algae love it. So right. from the point of view of the algae, all of these are nutrients. Huh. The only thing that you may have of concern is things like heavy metals, but we're already not allowing people to emit those up stacks. Okay. And in fact, the algae that we grow has less of those in it than fish you take out of the ocean. Hmm. So it's actually safer than, which is kind of surprising, tells you a little bit about the state of the ocean. Sure. So tell me about the revenue model. Well, the stuff that comes out, the algae has a sort of minimum floor level value of around $2,000 per ton, and it can go up over hundreds of thousands of dollars per ton, depending on which algae strain and for what use you're growing it. It takes about two tons of carbon dioxide to grow a ton of algae, so we're consuming two tons of carbon dioxide. We end up with a ton of algae product, and at the low end, that algae product is worth $2,000 a ton. At the high hmm. end, $600,000 a ton. So I'm, uh, I'm just taking a wild leap of faith here and assuming the stack gases are free. Well, I mean, even if they're not, but yes, we do provide a carbon credit. So right. for each ton of algae that we create, we've consumed two tons of CO2 from potentially mm. your smokestack. Hmm. So, so if you're making cement, you're making the greenest cement on earth now. Okay. And is that your target audience in terms of clientele is is uh, high volume emitters of toxic and no noxious gases? I think all large final emitters are our target audience. We do need a certain amount of carbon dioxide in order to make a uh, viable economic, there is a capital expense associated with it. So we've targeted 10,000 plus uh, large final emitters in North America, each emitting 25,000 tons of CO2 or more per year. Mm -hmm. So they would be our target audience. And at this point, can you assign a dollar per a dollar capex and opex per ton of carbon removed from the gas stream uh, relative to and then relate it to the, the, the value of the, of the produced algae? Yeah, you can look at it that way. The easier way is to look at it. This is a profitable way to consume carbon dioxide and make a product. We make more than we cost. Oh, that's, so that's we are a simple. pollution control technology right. and I think the only one that is a profit center. Hmm. Okay, so what does your revenue picture look like go at this point going out 12 months, 24 months? We have just completed our initial, our, our reverse takeover event. Actually, this morning I pushed the buzzer on the, uh, on the TSX. We will be building our first commercial scale plant at Stelco, uh, which is a large greenhouse gas emitter, as people mm -hmm. are aware, and Stelco is very committed to the environment. So we'll be doing um, some mitigation work with them and uh, consuming something on the order of 5,000 tons per year of CO2. 
Uh, the, uh, the other side of our business involves these sort of higher value products with smaller emitters, and we're doing work with Markham District Energy as well, building a smaller plant where we'll be producing hundreds of tons of, of uh, nutraceutical grade algae per year. Hmm. So what percentage of GHG gas is being emitted annually? Would this be applicable towards as a mitigating influence? Um, really, it, 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 it sounds very grandiose, but kind of all of it. Hmm. Uh, you need to have enough, I, I mentioned 25,000 tons, it wouldn't make sense for me to put an algae plant say on your house for your furnace, but on anything bigger than about 25,000 tons per year it starts to make really strong economic sense and in, in some respects we actually make more money than the host plant. Our product is more valuable. We take what is a waste product, your carbon dioxide, which you value at a negative, let's say that we're valuing it at $15 per ton as a, as a carbon cost, we're taking that, two tons of that, and turning it into something worth $2,000 plus per ton. Hmm. So it's, it's almost like we're tipping fee driven. So there's a, there's a huge opportunity for us. And if we were starting an algae company, absent carbon dioxide concerns or, or emissions concerns, we would actually have to go out in search of enough carbon dioxide to do it. Hmm. Because again, they consume a lot of it. Hmm. So the other question, or the other side of that equation, I guess, is how much algae product that you produce could the world absorb a in lot. terms of the demand? A lot. Aquaculture is growing seven, eight, nine, ten percent per year and they are almost entirely reliant on for their protein content on fish meal derived from stocks of uh, bait fish basically in the ocean, anchoveta off the coast of South America. As you can imagine every year we have less of a catch of those and mm -hmm. every year we have more of a demand. The two lines are diverging and they're diverging pretty seriously. Uh, we can't substitute other sources of protein like soy and corn because that's fish are not supposed to be eating soy and corn. You can do it to an extent, but you still need to have something that mimics the amino acid profile, the protein profile of fish meal. And algae is a one-to-one -one substitute. So right off the top, there's millions of tons of capacity to absorb within the fish meal market alone. Hmm. Uh, you get into terrestrial animals, agriculture production, soil amendment, I would say billions of tons are required. So. Wow, so this also adds to the sort of rejuvenation of uh, fish stocks it does. globally. It does. Fascinating. Um, okay, so then what is what would you categorize as the size in, of the whole global market for your, for your algae products? Uh, difficult for me to say. It's more than I can put. Uh, it's too many zeros for me to look at. Uh, I, I, I think that there's the... Uh, we will not be constrained by markets to absorb our product mm -hmm. because of the myriad of uses. The, the making biofoams alone is probably more capacity than our first plant at Stelco will be able to manage mm -hmm. just for biofoams to make sneakers that are green. Wow. Interesting. Okay, that's a great introduction there. We're going to leave it for now. Stephen, we'll come back to you in a couple of quarters and see how you're making out. Thanks for your time today. Perfect. Thank you very much for having me.